Well, platinum prices are rallying to a three-month high yesterday after Anglo-American Plat said it would restructure operations at two South African mines and sell another. So what does it mean for the platinum belt in the country, and in particular platinum mines? Uh, joined by a man who knows more about this uh, than me, uh, analyst Simon Brown with me on the show. Now, Simon, morning uh, to you. I imagine you've been watching this incredibly closely. Uh, what are you making of uh, platinum or Anglo's uh, uh, actions on this? Morning. I think it was fairly aggressive, but we knew it was coming. I mean, they announced a year ago that they were going to be looking at potential restructuring of Anglo Platinum. We've seen the troubles, and the troubles are beyond just Marikana and, and in fact, the strike action that started in Implats now almost a year ago. Mm. It's a global demand for platinum that's, that's been hitting the, the industry. And we're in a fortunate position that because we produce so much of the global platinum, if we pull some of that capacity out of the market, that can push the price up. We saw that happen yesterday, but I think what's been happening in the industry is everyone's like, well, you first, you first. No one wanted to blink. And I think Anglo-American, the parrot company, and Anglo-Platinum have really taken that task and said, we're going to do it. And they're taking almost 7% of global production out of the market. We saw that price, as you said, at, at, at levels not seen in, in, in a couple of months. We saw platinum go above gold for the first time in over a year. What reaction do you think uh, analysts are going to give and market analysts are going to give to the workers now uh, planning to go on strike as well? They're trying to recover the company by cutting jobs and getting their costs under control, but now they could face another series of strikes. Well, yeah, and I think right at this moment in time, the hardest job in the world is probably CEO of Anglo Platinum. In the one sense, what do you want to do? You want to cut production and the like to, to try and, and boost the price and get your company going. And they announced on Monday they're going to lose almost 20 rand a share in the next set of numbers. Uh, great idea. Remove production. The other side of that coin, of course, is in the other workers who are not losing their jobs say, hang on a second, we're not going underground. Your job as a CEO is to make the company viable. And there really is a rock and a hard stone. I think that they're going to push through with it. I suspect there's going to be a lot more turmoil. What we're seeing is, is a, a, an industry which had a lot of strife towards the end of last year, which had to a degree quietened down. It hadn't gone away. We've had Harmony in the gold sector closing mines just last week. That strife is now going to return, and it's going to be a, a, a very tumultuous period, probably for the rest of the year. Ironically, what that is going to do is take even more production out because miners aren't going underground. Mm -hmm. Good for the platinum price, and Platts Lonman going to be probably the real beneficiaries. Not good for uh, jobs, though, as far as uh, the, the workers are concerned as well. You were saying a rather aggressive stance from Anglo Platts. How do you think they could have handled this differently, potentially? I mean, they've put four mines in care and maintenance. They're going to sell two in time. But those four mines in care and maintenance have an impact on 14,000 jobs. That is a massive number. They say that that they're going to create 14,000 jobs, they're going to spend 800 million. I think everyone is deeply skeptical of that. If it was just a case of spending the money, we wouldn't have the unemployment issue that we have now. Um, the ways they could have done it is, is, is shorter shifts and the like. And a lot of these mines are running conops 24 hours a day. Could you move it to 18 hours a day and the like? There was always going to be job losses. There was always going to be salary reductions at some point. The people were going to be a little bit poorer for it. But certainly it's what Germany did during the heart of the crisis in 2008 and 9. They said, let's preserve the job, mm. but perhaps the person works shorter hours, has a less take-home pay. In the case of Germany, Germany, government stepped in and actually then put that shortfall in terms of, 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 of salaries to preserve those jobs. Uh, this is a, a, an area, Rustenburg, the, the platinum belt, uh, to take a 14,000 job hit. And then it's the allied jobs, it's the service providers, the caterers, the cleaners, the security, etc. It's a giant number. It, it, it certainly does go beyond the, the, the 14,000 jobs that we were initially talking about as well. Do you think that Anglo Platts, considering the action that they could now see of non activity uh, from workers, do you think they could potentially backtrack on this and rethink this, or are they in too deep now? I think they're in too deep. I think they can't backtrack. I think they can't show a sign of weakness. I, I think that the tensions between uh, uh, the, the, the mining and the business side and, and, and then on the, on the labor side are, are too strong. I think if they backtrack, it's a sign of weakness. Um, and then they, 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 their sense will be, if we do mm. this, we're never going to get anything pushed through before. They're going to take the point, mining is tough. They're going to put their gumboots on and they're going to push through. Well, Simon, always a pleasure talking to you, making sense of what's happening. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, mining analyst Simon Brown speaking to us uh, and giving us his thoughts on Amplats.